Something I hate more than probably not having parts in stock for you guys is not having an installation video for the parts that I make. And I released a new product a week or two ago and shipped a whole bunch of them out, but now I'm getting emails saying, well, how do I install this? Well, unfortunately, I've been sick and uh, super freaking busy rebuilding motors for you guys that I haven't gotten around to it until today. Just got the motor all back from the machine shop, nice and machined, hot tanked, nice and clean, ready, for rebuild. Now, since these rebuild motors aren't exactly cheap, I want to make sure that this never happens again. Basically, on the rebuild motors that I do, I send a balance line for the block and the head to improve oil flow. Now, this doesn't address the issue of poor oil change interval and poor quality oil, which you guys really need to do because a couple extra oil changes is going to be way cheaper than a rebuilt motor. These are the exact balance shafts that came out of this motor. Now we could easily throw in new balance shafts and, and ones that measure out and aren't gouged like these are, but what if we deleted them to improve the reliability of the motor and have very little drawbacks? The question that's popped up multiple times is, well, can't I just take the chain off and uh, run them with the balance shafts in there? And yeah, you can. My four-cylinder in the shop truck is running balance shafts in the motor, but all we've done is tacked the uh, little oil tensioner hole and no rear chain, and the truck runs just fine. Now, the problem with that is that you are still subject to the bearing tolerance of these shafts, especially if they've destroyed themselves. Now you've got galled up bearings and galled up balance shafts and now you're pumping oil through that tolerance that's flopping around and you run the risk of potentially having the motor fail down the road. These are the bearings that came out of the other rebuilt motor. I don't know who it was, uh, Fraser or Jasper. I don't know who rebuilt that motor, but uh, these balance shaft bearings look pretty haggard and I don't want to put the balance shafts through there uh, in hopes that uh, they're going to have a good oil tolerance and uh, not leak and reduce the pressure in the system. The kit that I designed completely removes the bearings, completely removes the balance shafts, and only has a tiny, tiny drawback. The only drawback that I can think of for the balance shaft delete kit is a little bit of vibration below 1500, maybe 2000 RPM at most, and lower. So you're going to have a little bit more felt vibration in the cab in a later video, we're gonna test this 3.7. It's gonna get rebuilt with the Balance Shaft Elite Kit. And we're gonna compare that to Zach's extended cab, four-wheel drive, white, 3.7 liter truck as an apples to apples comparison between balance shafts and deleted. So what's the trade-off? You have a little bit of vibration under 1500 RPM or so. And what's the benefit? What do you get from doing this? Well. Between the two balance shafts and timing chain and everything, it's about 12 pounds of weight savings. Maybe that doesn't sound like much, but well, that's a plus. Beyond that, we have improved oil flow throughout the rest of the mains and the head because now we're no longer oiling a whole bunch of chain and bearings and balance shafts because the bushings in my delete kit completely block that off. So now we have improved oil flow throughout the rest of the motor. Perhaps the most obvious reason to do this modification is to increase reliability. By installing my delete kit and deleting the balance shafts, we no longer have these things flopping around at 12,000 RPM trying to kill your motor. So I think for an awful lot of reasons, this is the end all be all kit to improve reliability of your four or five cylinder motor. So I broke one of my rules and that is that anything that I sell is a complete kit. Now, since this kit comes with a tool, I was going to have to increase the shipping cost to send you guys a couple foot stick of half inch all thread threaded rod. I chose to send this kit with the bushings and the installation tool, but not the threaded rod. All you guys have to provide is a foot or two of threaded rod and a couple nuts. It's half inch, it's what it's designed for. And the tool that I designed will actually help you guys remove the bearings from the motor and install the bushings in the kit. So in an effort to save a bunch of money in shipping costs and whatnot, shipping you guys a couple feet worth of all thread, I figured you guys would either have it or 
it'd be a lot cheaper for you to just run down to your hardware store or wherever to get a couple feet of all thread. You'll need about a two foot long, you can go shorter, but I would say two foot long piece of all thread and that way you can reach the bottom bearing to get it removed and the new bushings to be reinstalled. Since I rebuilt a lot of these motors, I actually have the Kent Moore dealership uh, service tool to remove these bearings. And I had to come up with a way that I can ship a tool in a small package to help you guys get these bearings out and put the new bushings in. I can't just rent out this thing and ship this all over the country. So I designed a tool that fits inside this tray that I designed and you guys can build into a tool that removes the bearings and installs the bushings. On the passenger side, we have a bearing that sits right here and we have a bearing that sits way down here. We're not going to remove one and then install one. We're gonna remove these two on the passenger side first and then we're gonna start the installation process. So don't take the bearing out and then install the bushing because we've got to remove both of these before doing any installation. Before we drive out the bearings, we need to make a mark for their depth because we're gonna put the bushings back where the bearings were and uh, a little piece of painter's tape and a Sharpie is all that you need. So whether you wanna do it off of the transmission uh, level or where the timing cover used to sit, doesn't super matter. Just put your piece of tape right about there, wrap it around a couple times and then make a mark, whichever is best for you. I'm just gonna go off of the transmission height here, and it doesn't need to be super, super, super perfect, but that's, uh, that's all we need, a little tiny mark, and that is the height for the upper bearing here. So now we can drive that one out. We made this tool really thick so that this would, uh, would work. Maybe I'll lay the block down, make it easier on myself. Now it's moving. You can almost hear it change, change tone there. You see my mark here was actually at the, the transmission and now it's about a half an inch low. So there you go. Before we fish out that bearing, I just wanna call you guys attention to the tool is aluminum, so it's going to take a little bit of force and it's going to have a little bit of mushrooming here. Uh, the OD, the outer diameter, is actually the same size as the lower bearing. So when we push the bushings in, this might actually need to get dressed a little bit. And uh, we'll attempt to show you guys that here in just a second. But uh, you see a little bit of deforming on the tool. No big deal, this is kind of a one-use tool. That's why we sent it with the kit to make it as easy as possible for you guys to put this into your motor. While pulling these bearings out with, say like a cam bearing puller, might be better. Uh, we found that just by pushing them in and flopping them on the side and kind of smashing them with the uh, all thread kind of turned around is pretty simple. And what that allows us to do is to, once they're kind of flattened a little bit, get them to come back out the back of the motor. So. It's gonna be a little bit difficult, but uh, I wanna tell you guys it's not impossible because I've done this several times. This is the best way that I came up with. You just don't wanna scratch the, uh, the rest of this with the, uh, the all thread. It's probably all it needed. Just keep smashing it till it comes out. Oops, and I hope I hope you guys can see this on the camera. Oops. There you go. Just uh, probably smash it more than this, but it can be done. Get this guy down here into our other bearing. A little piece of tape. Same story. Somewhere in the mix there. Somewhere in the middle. And then we'll mark it with the transmission mounting surface here. And now we've got our mark here and our mark here for the new bushings. So I mentioned a minute ago that we needed to clean up this edge from the mushrooming caused by the first bearing. So all we gotta do is take a grinder and clean this off that way 
it'll go down and push the other bearing out. Just enough to take that uh, mushroom off, no big deal. There we go. See, and the tool comes out, no problem. Hardly any mushroom whatsoever. So now that the other bearing is pushed out, you could technically leave it in there, but I'm gonna flip this around, bludgeon that bearing nice and flat, reach in there with the uh, magnet and whatnot and try to get that bearing out so that we can put the new bushings in. What I'm not doing is hitting the sides of the, the walls at all, or trying not to at least, because those are the surfaces we need our bushings to occupy. I wish you guys could see this. I should probably put the camera in there. So I've got the magnet and the little jaws on the, the magnet grabbing that bearing. I tapped it a couple times and it's now flat enough that I can pull it straight out of the hole there. Alright, dang. Look at that. <laughs> Perfect. I couldn't come up with a clearer way to tell you guys where these bearings go. They're actually precision machine. I mean, they're within a couple thousandths of, of where they need to be. And these will actually push into place and crush a little bit so that they'll really never come out unless you want to remove them. And I don't know why you would do that. But passenger front, that is the pass side, front of the motor, front of the vehicle. I'm going to pop that guy out. Great time to put some oil on your O-ring. Little lube never hurt nobody. And these are actually chamfered. I don't know if you guys can see that, but one edge is chamfered, and that is the leading edge. Got our bushing pushed onto the tool there. Remember the mark that we made back here. This is going to line up for me on the transmission uh, mating surface here. And so what we want to do is send this all the way in, all the way to the back and get it all centered up. And then we're gonna tap this into place until this mark is even with that surface there. So get it centered, get it nice and straight. We'll get our little mini sledge here, get it centered up in the back of the uh, motor here where the balance shaft used to be. We'll just tap it in place. There we go. <clears throat> wiggle this out of here, wiggle that other ring out of there. Now that bushing is installed where it needs to be. Passenger center, same story. This is going to go in at your second dot here. <clears throat> you can see those two bushings clear down inside there. Now that the hard part's over, we can pull out the passenger rear right here. And that's going to go on this last little area here. And uh, the tool won't be needed for that. Uh, because it's just ever so slightly too big and you run the risk of pinching and bending this bushing being that's a little bit thinner and whatnot. So what we're going to do is real gently use a brass drift and either my soft and hard faced hammer or continue on with the little mini sledge. But real gently we're just going to push this in to this rear hole right here. And uh, again with the chamfer and uh, go nice and slow, go nice and square to the bore and just make sure this is cleaned up as you drive it in. We'll just gently move our way around here and uh, make sure this thing goes in nice and square and we don't bend it or mar the, the bushing up too badly. The reason I said to use a brass drift and hammer is that uh, not a whole lot of people have a bearing driver set, bearing and race driver set. So um, if you had something like this, you could make it work. This number two here is great uh, if you did it kind of backwards instead of in the middle because the last thing you want to do is flare that out. But you could definitely use this on the end of the tool here and hit it in. I think that uh, 
the brass drift is a little more controllable and a little more uh, I don't call it accurate but uh, a little more dexterous and whatnot so you don't want to damage much of anything the bearing seal driver sets you know a good idea but uh, you know this one here number three would work really well for the driver one here but uh, like I said it's not super necessary to have a specialty toolkit like this to install this balance shaft elite kit and then just get it flush all it needs to do is plug the hole so just get it flush and uh, be done with that install driver rear brake self-explanatory this is the hole right here the reason being that one side has three and this side has one is the way that the right side the passenger side gets oil is throughout the shaft the bearings get oil to come around them and that's why they have this little channel right here so the oil can kind of flow around the outside and then into the center of the bearing to then lubricate the balance shaft well the passenger side gets oil through the back of the motor here and through this little port and then it actually feeds oil through the middle of the balance shaft and squirts out through the shaft itself onto the bearings. So on the passenger side you saw me do the brass drift and that'll work just fine on the driver's side here too but I've got this bearing driver kit and I figured I'd show you guys how to do that. Just in the event that you had one of these you can do that too. So center it up, tap it on. Almost there. Nice and flush. And you have successfully deleted your balance shafts and blocked off all the oil that used to go to them. Now you've increased the oil pressure throughout the entire motor and you're done. Whether you use the bearing driver kit or the brass drift, you can see the, the install is pretty much the same. And uh, it's pretty easy to get them in there. Uh, obviously the hard part is getting the old bearings out, but realistically that wasn't very hard anyway. A couple hour install, you can do it in the vehicle, you just gotta pull the trans. Um, in my opinion, if you are going to do this modification to your balance shafts, you might as well pull the motor out, you might as well throw some new bearings in the bottom end, maybe a front timing kit, and just r and this motor um, as best as you can to really ensure that uh, this will last a long time. If you're doing this mod with low enough miles, you might be able to get away with not having to do the main bearings and connecting rod bearings or the front timing kit, but uh, it's definitely a worthwhile uh, endeavor. It's not that hard to pull a motor. Um, I've got a video about 20 minutes long it shows you guys step by step how to pull the motor. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it's a lot easier to work on these on a bench or on a stand and uh, do the bearings, do everything. You can pull the motor with the compressor still attached to the truck so you won't have to charge your Freon. You lose the oil, you lose the coolant, but there again, there's an opportunity to uh, flush those two systems. So really quick install, all in all, a couple hours at most. Uh, obviously pulling the transmission back is a lot easier than pulling the entire motor, but uh, your mileage may vary. The install of the kit will most assuredly improve the reliability of the motor because it's going to remove the very thing that we see causing the motors to fail. That said, you guys still got to change your oil often enough. You still got to use quality oil because it's way cheaper to do that than to rebuild and replace your motor. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful. hope this was informative. And if you've got a video idea or product idea, I'd love to make a video product just for you. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one.